Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today's video I am so excited about because I'm filming this intro after filming all the projects, which normally I film beforehand and then I get into the projects, but this one I'm filming after and these projects, you are gonna wanna stick throughout this video because these projects turned out incredible. Every one of them, this is hands down my favorite Ikea hacks I've done. And I have said that many times in past videos, especially makeover videos. Each makeover is always a new favorite of mine, which I think is fine. However, in this case, these Ikea hacks, hands down, like they top the other Ikea hacks I've done. And in the last video, I asked you if you wanted to see more of kind of my old style of content, such as the Ikea hacks and the DIY projects. And I had such a wide response of people wanting that type of content. So I am definitely going to incorporate it on the channel every now and then. So today I have four hacks that I'm gonna be sharing with you all from Ikea. And these projects really came together so fast. I actually finished all of them in one day, which normally doesn't happen. So that really shows you how simple some of them are. I always try to give my projects like some substance, but some of these just came together so quickly, which is great because they all turned out so good. We're doing a little table, a lamp, some candle holders, and a rug. The first project is one of my favorites. Honestly, it almost topped the table, but this mushroom lamp that we are gonna be creating out of an Ikea coffee pot, it's like a little coffee pot, which I feel like these you only see at diners or break rooms in an office. You never ever see these in a home or anything. So when I saw this, I was like, what if we use this as a base? And then we use one of the mixing bowls as the top. And then they also had an $8 little lamp thing. We put it all together and created the coolest lamp ever for $45. So for the supplies for this project, we're gonna be using the Sluka coffee pot, and then I'm using the Blonda bowl, this is the 11 inch size, and then the Barlast table lamp. And we're mainly using this for the electrical components because it's only $7.99. Now with the coffee pot, I'm actually gonna be cutting the handle off, and I know I aggressively just pulled out a saw, but it's way easier to cut off than it actually looks. It just comes right off, and I'm using this little tabletop vacuum. I've had this in my stash for like years, and I always pull it out. It's from Amazon, highly recommend it if you are a DIYer, so thought I just share it with you guys if you have not seen that and then I'm putting the actual little lamp together this is just such a cheapy little lamp from Ikea but it works perfectly for this project because we're gonna be covering all of it up and once you actually kind of create the entire lamp I realized I needed to cut the shade down a bit in order for the bowl to fit on top of this nicely and kind of conceal all of the components then I got pliers out and started to pull off the top and it popped right off which was great and it's not actually glued on so if you use a little bit of force it will pop right off now with our lamp, I'm actually going to unscrew the post in the center because we're going to be gluing this directly onto the metal base itself. And the adhesive that I'm using is called JB Weld. I'll link it below. I get mine at Lowe's or Home Depot just in the glue section, but you can also get it on Amazon. So I'll link it for you guys. And with this product, you mix it together and it's basically like an industrial strength epoxy adhesive. I'm applying it to the points that are actually going to hit the top of the base, which is a coffee pot, gluing that down and then using some tape just to hold it while it cures and it only needs a couple hours to cure which is nice so once that is done I just cut off the tape from the inside and this is kind of our lamp base which you can see the shape coming together pop the bowl on top and this is just gonna sit on top like that I mean you could glue it if you wanted to but I just placed it on top and I think it's totally fine as is I love the way that this turned out and for only $45 for the complete project I think that is such a great price it looks incredible For the second project, I actually found the rug for this one in the as is section. And if you've never heard of the as is section at Ikea, it is actually kind of like a return section. So people can go and return items. And if they're not damaged or anything, they're sold as is in this section. So I got this five by eight rug for $55. And I believe it was originally 85. I might be saying that wrong, but I'll pop it up on the screen right now for you. And when I saw this, I was like, oh, this would fit just so perfectly in my studio room. And we need a rug in there anyways. The floor has just been blank. So I wanted to to decorate this one a little bit and share with you guys how I'm turning a basic rug into a really cool kind of statement plaid rug. For this rug project, I got three different sizes of painter's tape, and this is actually all the tape that I used for the entire project. Now, as you can see here, I got the rug for $59.99, and this is what it looked like. They actually do sell this rug still if you are interested, and it is such a beautiful rug. I don't know why I've never noticed this one from Ikea in the past. Now, what you're going to do with this is so forgiving and simple. You are literally going to be creating varying stripes. Now, keep in mind, you're going to want your stripes that you're going to be adding the paint to to be rather thin 
thin, you're gonna want the plaid to be a little bit more of the color to be on the thinner side and more of the jute to show through. That's gonna give you kind of more of a natural overall blend when you add the lines in the opposite direction. So with the varying widths of tape, you're able to create different sizes of lines and then the areas of course that you are adding the tape are not going to get painted. So I started with the lengthwise first and added all of those tape strips and Justin helped me out with this process. It went pretty quick. We probably did this entire section in 20 minutes and the rug is also woven on a grid so you can just follow the lines in the actual rug as opposed to having to measure or anything so it's really really forgiving. Like you can see how straight we got these without having to measure at all. Then I brought this outside and I'm actually going to be using this primer here. It's a rust metal primer but it is the most beautiful rusty tone. It is perfect. Justin and I have actually used this in a project in the past and we talked about how beautiful of like a reddish terracotta it was. So I just went across and sprayed the entire front of this rug and I did leave some sections a little patchy in a sense to give the rug kind of a variegated stripe look. I thought that would be really pretty in the plaid, give it a little bit more interest. And then once you have all of your stripes on there, you can pull it off. And I feel like everyone's main question is, does this make the rug feel crunchy? And the answer is no. I don't know what it is, but whenever I do this on top of a jute rug, the jute just soaks up the spray paint, like almost the wetness of the spray paint and just leaves the pigment of the spray paint on the top of the surface. And it doesn't transfer either. It really is incredible. You can even see like when I'm adding this tape on the top of this and spraying it in the other direction, when I pull it up, none of the pigment transfers at all from the spray paint. So we went back inside and then just taped off our plaid in the opposite direction, just very randomly. And in this direction, we actually made the lines thinner because the color is going to be a little more intense. It's this blue shade, which is going to be a bit more vibrant than that red. And I sprayed this on just very randomly. It doesn't have to be perfect at all because those straight lines that you created with the tape really are going to kind of give that perfection quality to the piece already. And these rugs are amazing for the outdoors. So if you have a balcony or a porch or an outdoor dining area, you can totally make one of these on a jute rug, which is perfect for the outdoors as well. This reveal process is always my favorite. I mean, just look how good this plaid looks. It looks so good. I love the way that it turned out. And I'm putting this in my studio storage room, which has a big open space in the center, which very happy to place this in there. I've been in love lately with silver, stainless steel, chrome. Ever since moving into this house, I don't know what it is, mixing metals has been a huge thing I've been loving. And when I was at Ikea, I was gravitating towards all of the stainless steel elements, hence the mushroom lamp that we did. And I found these little like tulipy, I don't know what they are. They might be little candle holders or they might be like little riser feet or something. I'm not exactly sure what they are. And then I also found these new candle holder, these tapers that they have that are called Stockholm. And I combined them both together. They're really simple and I literally glued something to something to create something else. But I wanted to share it with you because sometimes the easiest projects are the best ones. And I feel like these taper candle holders just look so much more expensive than the overall cost of creating them. Welcome to the most simple project of this video. We are using these Stockholm taper holders, which are new at Ikea, along with these little tea light holders as well. And all I am doing is simply gluing these together, but it really does create such a high impact DIY project. I love projects that are simple, but look incredible in the end. So I'm using that same JB weld that we used on the mushroom lamp, same product, mixing that together. And I'm going to be applying that to the top of the taper holder. And the thing that's nice about both of these is they look like they were made to go together. Like this little tea light holder fits perfectly on top of the taper holder. It couldn't fit any better. And once it's cured down and dried, it just looks so good styled. So I repeated it to the other one. And I think you can create both of these for under $40 for the pair. I added this French pillar candle and I just love the way that these look. And I had to save the best for last because this one, which you might have seen in the thumbnail, turned out 
impeccable. I am so excited to have this in my home. Sometimes when I do these Ikea hacks videos, I already have like one of the pieces and I don't need it in my house. So I'll give it to a friend or donate it, whatever it might be. But for this particular video, like I'm keeping everything, including the table. I use one of the LAC bases, which if you've heard of LAC from Ikea, it's like one of the most inexpensive collections that they have. They do like coffee tables, side tables, really simple made of this lightweight wood. But I wanted to share with you how you could take one of the black ones and just add a simple trim detail and really elevate the look of it. I feel like it looks like a little like Biscoff cookie table. I don't even know. That's what I get from it. I absolutely love this table and I'm gonna share it with you. The trim is from Home Depot. It's actually like a roofing trim if you're curious. This table was definitely under $100 and it could have even been under 75, like $60 around. It's super affordable to recreate and it has such an impact, like such a statement piece of furniture, but also it could fit in with so many styles. For this table project, I'm using this LAC TV bench, which is only $25 at Ikea. I am not using the shelf in the center. And then this right here is roof closing trim. Now you can find this in the roofing section at Lowe's. I have a feeling us DIYers are gonna get our hands on this and the roofing people at Lowe's are gonna hate us. It's gonna be sold out, oh well. Anyways, I am going to be putting this on the front of the LAC table and actually just marking where I wanna do my cuts. Now you are going to need to miter the edges because on the top of the table, you're gonna want your trim to wrap around the exterior. So I'm mitering them outwards, if this makes sense. So as you could see across the entire edge of the table, I have that trim, then a mitered edge on the outside. I also wanted to make sure that where I'm placing the trim is even on either side. So that's why I'm actually holding the trim up to the table, as opposed to just measuring the length I need. I just wanted to make sure that it would fit. And here is an example of how those mitered corners fit together. Now for the legs, I'm just cutting it at the skinniest section of the trim, which is kind of the dip in the wave. And then I'm measuring it to the length that I need and then just cutting an additional eight of those. I'm just adding the trim pieces on the exterior pieces of the legs. It just minimizes the amount of trim that you need, but you can add it to all four sides of the legs if you want to. However, I'm just showing you guys um, with adding it on the exterior. So this stain here is the Puritan pine color and it really looks so good. Highly recommend this color if you are wanting to recreate the same table that I did. It looks great with the black Ikea lac base as well. So I stained all of that trim, the sides of it, and the front of it that's going to actually be shown. And this is what that looked like once it was stained. It actually stains really beautifully. It kind of has a highlight to it, which I love. And I'm going to be placing this on the front of the table towards the bottom uh, for the top section. And then I'm just using a brad nailer to nail this down. But you can also use liquid nails um, or just like a little hammer and nails if you have one of those as well. You do not need a brad nailer for this project but since I had one I figured it would just be the easiest way to attach this trim super quick and simple you could probably also use wood glue if you wanted to so I just used a couple of brad nails all the way across added my trim piece around and then where the corners meet up of course they're not gonna be perfect just because it is that scallopy trim so I'm using a sander to just sand down those corners and give a smooth finish to the corner as you could see here it looks really nice and clean and I did add a little bit of stain over the top of that just to make it match the rest and then I'm adding the rest of the trim pieces onto the legs and this is what I meant by the outside like just the two outer edges of the leg I'm adding the trim on but you can add it to all four if you'd like to I just wanted to share with you how to make this table at the most affordable route which was this way and it only cost us under $60 to create this so cute So those are my Ikea hacks that I wanted to share with you today, and I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. It helps out the channel, and also subscribe to my channel by clicking that subscribe button, and then click the little bell icon next to it. I feel like a proper YouTuber with this outro at the moment. Shameless self-promo, but make sure to subscribe if you are not already. I post brand new home decor and DIY content every single week here on the channel, and I would love to know which Ikea hack was your favorite. Or if you're recreating any of them, which would you recreate? Leave a comment in the comment section and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye!